This is the first section of chapter three from the further mechanics book, Elastic Springs and uh, String, Springs and Strings. And here we're gonna be looking at uh, Hooke's Law and equilibrium problems. So the first thing, if things are going to be in equilibrium, then we're looking at balance forces, okay? So that means we're probably gonna be uh, resolving forces maybe horizontally um, so these are going to be balanced going oh that's vertically isn't it uh, we're going to have balanced forces where um, the forces to the left to the right are equal it may be that we have things on a slope so um, it may be things like this that we have and we know that when we resolve this way these are going to be balanced and when we resolve this way those are going to be balanced. So they're all going to be balanced problems. Now, what Hooke's Law does, um, it allow, allows us to uh, look at springs and what happens with uh, different springs. Now, you know that you can squash a spring yeah, or you can stretch a spring. So let's say I've got a, I'm not very good at drawing springs, so let's say I draw a spring like this. Okay, I can do better than that. Let's try this. There we go, that's a better spring. And let's say it's untouched, then this will be its natural length. So this is its natural length. Now in the formula that we have, we the natural length we call L, and you can see that here. Yeah, so L stands for the natural length of a spring. Now, a spring I could squash so let's say I squash this spring so that now it's a little bit shorter. Then I could look at the difference between its natural length and its compressed length. So here we have a compressed spring here. It's under compression. Um, and the difference between its natural length, let's put some dotted lines here the difference between its natural length and its compressed length is um, x in our formula so we'll call this x here okay now when a, a string is compressed it wants to sort of push outwards so any forces that we have any um, forces are going to be pointing outwards and because it's pointing outwards uh, we have uh, thrust. Remember, thrust is a pushing force. So you'll have thrust pushing against uh, an object. It could be on one side or the other. Normally, like they're connected to walls, one end is fixed and the other end um, isn't fixed. So let's say, let's make things a little bit more straightforward here. Let's say that this side here is a wall. Okay and uh, it's fixed at that end. So if you compress it, you're gonna get some thrust there. Now it may be that rather than compressing the string, you stretch the spring. So let's say we stretched it. Yes, yeah, so there we go, there's a, a stretch spring like that. Um, so now it's not under compression anymore. Uh, we have a stretched spring, so it's now stretched. And because it's stretched, it wants to go back to its natural length. So we're actually going to have a, a pulling force back that way. And we're going to have tension. It's trying to get back to its natural length. So we have tension going back that way. And this time, the value of x, the difference between its natural length and its either stretched or squashed length here, would be x. And what links the tension, the thrust, the natural length and the, and the extended length is this formula here, Hooke's Law. T, which could be tension or thrust, tension or thrust, depending on whether the spring is squashed or stretched, equals lambda. Now we'll talk about that in a moment. So X, is going to be the difference between the um, natural length and its stretched or squashed length. So let, let me call this the 
uh, difference between stretched or squashed or compressed I'll use the word squashed length and natural length L is the natural length so if you don't touch it you leave it alone that's what the natural length is a lambda is what we call the modulus of elasticity so it's another one of these numbers that tells us something about the spring so this is what we call the modulus of elasticity and this modulus of elasticity is measured in newtons and basically it describes the stretchiness or, or the, the squashiness of the spring yeah you notice that some springs are really difficult to compress or stretch where uh, whereas other little other springs you could probably squash or stretch quite easily so like a little spring in your pen you know you can literally squash it between two fingers but look at the spring they use for the um, suspension of a car they've got springs in there um, they are very very difficult to compress or st uh, stretch and they're made deliberately um, so to be like that so the important bit here is this formula using this formula and resolving forces everything is going to be in equilibrium in these problems that we're doing now okay an elastic string of length two meters and modulus of elasticity 29.4 okay so here we've got its natural length so that would be what L is here we've got the modulus of elasticity so that's lambda has one end fixed okay a particle of mass four kilograms is attached to the other end and hangs at rest find the extension of the spring so we want to do a diagram always do a diagram so uh, if it's hanging let's call this like the ceiling or wherever it is it's hanging down um, because this one is a string um, I'll just draw it as a straight line you could draw it as a, a spring if you wanted to and we've got a mass here of 4 kg and it hangs at rest so we want to put all the forces on so we've got 4 G going down and we've got tension here going up since it's in equilibrium if we resolve in this direction then you could say T minus 4 G equals 0 or T equals 4G okay now what's our formula that links T to the elasticity and its stretch length and its natural length it's this formula here so we have T equals 4G so 4G equals lambda so that's 29.4 times by um, x now on this question we don't know um, what what the extension is we'll call it x now I'm going to put that on the diagram so let's say that um, this is the natural length here okay and the extension of the spring is this little bit here not the clearest of diagrams let's make that a little bit better and actually we do know the natural length don't we so that's two so we'll put a two in there two meters long string and the extension is just this bit here yeah is x so x is what we're trying to find that's the extension and then that divided by the natural length which is two and it's just rearranging this to find out what x is so we've got 4g times by two then divided by 29.4 gives us x so if we solve that so remember g is 9.8 we're not physicists we're only mathematicians so 9.8 times by 2 and then divide that by 29.4 and we get x is 8 over 3 
meters. So I could leave it like that. I could change it to a mixed number if I want. Two and two thirds, but I'm, I'm probably don't want to change that to um, a decimal because I'm going to have to round it. So there's the value of x. Okay, an elastic spring of length 1.5 meters. Okay, so that's going to be L. Has one atta uh, end attached to a fixed point. A horizontal force of magnitude 6 newtons is applied to the other end and compresses the spring to a length of 1 meter. Okay, find the modulus of elasticity of the spring so again we'll do a diagram so let's say this is my wall here I've got a spring attached to there okay and then I've got a force pushing it to squash the spring so I've got a force here of uh, six newtons that's applied to squash the spring and it's been squashed to a length of one meter so this is now one meter now it was its natural length is 1.5 meters so make sure that when you uh, put x you don't put x as one because that's the squash length we want the difference between them so in this question x the compression amount is going to be 0.5 meters now there's thrust from the spring because the spring is trying to push that way um, it's all in equilibrium so we resolve forces and we'll resolve forces horizontally so we could say that um, uh, t minus 6n equals 0 or t equals 6n Okay, now we just use our formula, which is Hooke's law. Okay, so now we know that T is 6. We're trying to find a modulus of elasticity. So X is going to be 0 0.5. The natural length was 1.5. So we can rearrange this and get lambda equals 6 times 1.5 divided by 0.5 so we'll do that 6 times 1.5 divided by 0.5 and we get 18 now remember it's in newtons so lambda equals 18 newtons that's the modulus of elasticity okay the elastic springs PQ and QR are joined at Q to form one long spring the spring pre-Q has natural length 1.6, that's L for PQ. And the modulus of elasticity of that spring is uh, 20. So let's start writing some stuff down. So for PQ, L is 1.6 and lambda is 20. Then we've got this other spring QR, which has a natural length of 1. 0.4 and a modulus of elasticity of 28. So I'll just write that down. QR, natural length L, 1.4, modulus of elasticity, 28. Okay, the ends of P and R are one long spring, so they're attached to each other, and attached to two fixed points, which are four meters apart, as shown in the diagram. Find the tension in the combined spring now i'm going to draw a bigger diagram because i really need more space to show what's going on so here's one spring here let's put this point here where they're joined this is the other spring here okay and i've got these points p and r so it's between these two points here which are four meters apart So P is here, Q is here, sorry, R is here, and they're joined at Q. Now each of the springs has been stretched because the total of their natural lengths here 
would be three meters. And between them, they've been stretched to four meters. So let me just draw like a, a little thing here to show. Um, so the, the first spring, the one that goes from P to Q, I'm guessing its natural length was like a bit like that. So this was uh, 1.6 meters. So it's been stretched a bit. And then the spring at the other end here, that was 1.4 meters like this and they've been stretched to fill four meters so what we know is that let's say that this spring here yeah has been stretched by an amount which we'll call x and this spring the other spring here maybe i should do that in a different color okay this is meant to be a straight line by the way and we want to work out well how much has this string been or spring been stretched by well we know the whole thing from one end to the other is four meters so if we did four uh minus 1.6 minus 1.4 minus x okay we're going to get how much that gap is so we get one minus x okay so the stretch of the other spring is one minus x so one string has been stretched by x the other string we can sort of relate it by the same amount i'm just going to tidy this up a bit and that will be one minus x so let's put this back so that's the middle bit there there's this one and its extension we said was one minus x. So we've got the extension of both strings. So now we can write e equations for both springs. So let's start with spring PQ. Oh, and the other thing we need to put on is the forces now. Um, they've been stretched, so they're both trying to pull back the other way. So we're gonna have tension going back this way yeah now since they're connected the tension in both of them is going to be the same because they're connected together like one long spring so yeah let's start with pq um, and uh, we can write down uh, using Hooke's law so I'll just write that here again so t is going to equal um, 20 times by uh, x which we said was x for that spring over uh, its natural length which is 1.6 we're going to do the same for the um, other uh, spring the QR so that will be t equals, and it's going to be the same t. Um, lambda here is 28. Its extension is 1 minus x over its natural length, which was 1.4. So what we can do is these two equations can go together. So we will get 20x over 1.6 equals... Let's expand the brackets, 28 minus 28x over 1.4. So we can cross multiply. So I'll do 20 times by 1.4. So I'll get uh, 28x equals, I'm cross multiplying here. So let's do 28 times 1.6. So that's gonna be 44.8 minus 44.8x um, so let's add 44.8x uh, to both sides so we'll get 72.8x equals 44.8 so from there we will get x equals 
44.8 divided by 72.8. So we'll get 8 over 13. So x equals 8 over 13. So now we can substitute this into any one of our equations. The easiest one is this one. Whoops. Try again. So the easiest one to substitute in is into this one. So this is going to go into there. So the question was about finding the tension. So the tension is going to equal 20 times x, and x is 8 over 13, divided by 1.6. Now I've just done that on my calculator, and we get 100 over 13 newtons. Now we could leave it like that, because if we change it to a decimal, uh, we'll probably have to round it to three significant figures, so 7.69 newtons, so that's three significant figures. So an elastic string of natural length 2L, okay, so 2L here is going to be L in my formula for Hooke's law, so let's just remind ourselves of that. So T equals lambda x over L. Uh, modulus of elasticity is 4mg, so the 4mg is going to be our lambda in our equation. It's stretched between two points A and B. The points A and B are on the same horizontal level, and the length from A to B is 2L, which happens to be the same length as the natural length of the string. A particle P is attached to the midpoint of the string and hangs in equilibrium with both parts of the string making an angle of 30 degrees with the line A, B. Find in terms of M the mass of the particle. So let's draw these two points A and B here, like this. We know that the distance between these two points here is 2L, which is the natural length of the string. So the string has a mass attached to it, so it's hanging down like this. Okay. So we've got this, um, it's particle P, isn't it? So we've got particle P here. And the mass of the particle, well, we're not going to use M because we've already got an M in this 4MG here. Yeah, so we're going to need to use a different letter for the mass of the particle. And I'm going to use um, X. So the weight here is going to be xg, so the mass of the particle I'm calling x, so I need to find x. In the string we have uh, tension this way, there's our tension there and there, like that. And we're told that this angle here is 30 degrees. Right, so what do I need to do? Well I need to find the tension, so I can put that in Hooke's law. So uh, we're going to resolve uh, horizontal, vertically to do that. Now if we do that, we need to work out what the um, vertical components of the tension are, and that's sort of here, because it's like these two tensions either side of the mass, and both of those are going to be T sine 30. So this is T sine 30, and we, from the other side of the string, T sine 30 there. So if I resolve um, vertically, I will have 2 T sine 30 equals XG. Now sine 30 is a half. So what we get is uh, T equals XG, because the half and the sine 30 will, or sorry, the 2 and the sine 30 will cancel out, just leaving t equals xg. Right, okay. Now we want to put in this into the formula for um, Hooke's law. So we've now got t. Uh, the natural length we know, that's 2l. Lambda we know. What we need to know now is the extension of the string. So the, basically the length of that purple line. Now, if I draw like a little diagram over here, I'm going to take one half of the string, which is this bit here. 
and I know this angle is 30 so basically I'm just looking at uh, this bit here so imagine that's a right angle triangle and the length at the top so basically um, this bit up here is going to be L isn't it it's going to be half of 2L so I've got the length of uh, this side up here is L I've got uh, this angle here is 30 degrees I've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse so if I use cosine C A H I'm trying to find H H is going to be adjacent over cos so the length of this side here is going to be um, L over cos 30 so L over cos 30 now remember that's just one side the bit that I've um, highlighted in orange so the extended length of the string so extended length this is the whole thing not just the extension of string equals um, two lots of L over cos 30 so let's see if we can uh, tidy that up a bit because cos 30 is, uh, is that root 3 over 2? Yeah. So what we've got is, uh, let's do it down here. We've got 2 times L over root 3 over 2. And uh, if we simplify that, so basically if you do like 2 divided by root 3 over 2, uh, we get 4 root 3 over 3 L. So 4 root 3 over 3 L. Okay, so that's the extended length. So X, the extension of the string. Extension. I think that's shorthand for extension, something like that. Is going to be that full length minus what the original length is which is 2L so on my calculator that gives negative 6 plus 4 root 3 over 3L as the extension so now we've got all the bits we need to go into Hooke's Law so this bit here is now X so we found that bit so putting everything into Hooke's Law now we've got T which is XG equals lambda which is 4MG times by X which is this negative 6 plus um, oh it's 4 root 3 sorry so 4 root 3 I missed the 4 out 4 root 3 over 3 L all over L and that's 2L that was the natural length so X is going to be all of that divided by G so what we could do is um, actually just move the G from here to here so X equals that is there any cancelling down we can do uh, yes L and L will cancel out G and G will cancel out so I'm guessing we've got something that we might be able to simplify so we've got 4M uh, times by negative 6 plus 4 root 3 over 3 divided by 2 let's see what that simplifies to so it's going to be something m now i don't get a particularly nice uh, answer here so i'm going to write it as a decimal afterwards so i get negative 12 plus 8 root 3 over 3 and when i press the sd button um, let's give the answer to uh, should be two or three significant figures but since um, 
G is given to two significant figures. I suppose we should really give the answer to two significant figures, but I'm going to do three. So 0 0.619 M. So that is the mass in terms of M. Or if you want an exact answer, you could say it's that, couldn't you? Uh, an elastic string has a natural length of two meters. Okay, so there's L. And a modulus of elasticity of 98. So there's lambda. One end of the string is attached to a fixed point O. So that's the bit at the top. The other end is attached to a particle P of mass four kilograms. So let's put four G down here. The particle is held in equilibrium. Okay, so forces of balance horizontally and vertically by a horizontal force of magnitude 28 newtons that's already on there uh, with op um, which is basically this line here yep uh, making an angle theta with the vertical as shown part a find the value of theta Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the forces on here. So we've got tension there. And because we're resolving horizontally and vertically, we need to find the horizontal and vertical components of the force. So um, this bit here will be T sine theta. And this bit here will be T cos theta. So let's start by resolving in a vertical direction so they're balanced so we have t cos theta um, going up will equal the 4g going down we if we resolve horizontally we're going to have t sine theta equals 28 so if we do the um, first second equation sorry uh, divided by the first like this so we've got 28 over 4g so the t's will cancel out and from there we can get 10 theta equals 28 over 4g now if i do 28 divided by uh, 4g actually simplifies to 5 over 7 Okay, so that means that theta is the tan inverse of 5 over 7. And that is going to be a number which we will round. It's 35.5376779. So let's round it to 1 dp. So part A we can say that theta equals 35.6. That's three significant figures on one decimal place. Normally give our angle answers to one decimal place. Okay, part B, we need to find the length of OP. Now, if we want to find the length of OP, we need to work out extension, its extension and add that to two. So we're going to work out the extension and add it to 2. And the way that we work out the extension is by using Hooke's law. So before we do that, we need to find a tension. Um, so what we're going to do is we need to substitute theta back into, um, let's say, T sine theta equals 28. So from there, we'll get T equals... 28 over sine theta. So I will use the answer button here to get the most accurate answer possible. So 28 divided by the sine of the answer. And it works out to be 48.17. Yeah, and again, when I come to use um, uh, Hooke's law, I'm going to use the answer button for this. Yeah, right. So let's go. 
Uh, so t is 48.17. I'm going to put dot 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 to show that actually it goes on. I'm not rounding it until I get to the end. Uh, modulus of elasticity is 98. Um, X is what we want to find. And the natural length is 2 meters. So we're going to take the answer that we have, the 48 point one seven the answer button that's going to get times by two and divided by ninety eight so if I do that so answer times by two divided by ninety eight and I get uh, zero point nine eight three one like this so the length OP is going to be its natural length plus that extension so I will get let's just add two to that so three significant figures is going to be 2.98 and we'll put down that we've rounded it to three significant figures there Okay, because we've got two identical springs, one is hanging below the other. They're attached at the middle, and there's a mass attached to the middle, basically. So let's draw these two springs like this, attached at the middle point here, which is the point Q. And this is the point P um, and then we've got a second spring at the bottom like this and that spring is attached at the bottom there at point R we're also told that the distance between these two points is uh, 4L so from there to there is 4L we have a mass attached at Q so there's a mass of M so we're going to have uh, 4G uh, going down oh sorry no not 4G MG going down like this so that's the mass holding it down we need to find the distance between P and Q basically so we're, we're trying to find this distance we know the natural length and the modulus of elasticity of both springs, the top spring, uh, natural length mg, modulus of elasticity 2mg, and the same for the bottom spring. Uh, let's do it over here, L2mg. Now, um, let's say that this is the natural length of the spring, and here's the natural length of the spring here. And let's say that this green color here represents the extension of each of these springs. Okay, now the extension of those springs is not the same because of the mass in the middle. That's causing maybe one to extend uh, more than one of the others. So we can't use the same letter. So let's use X for the extension of the top spring, Y for the extension of the bottom spring. Now, if it's compressed rather than extended, we'll just get a negative value for our working. And uh, we also need to add tension on here. So if we're assuming they're in extension, we've got tension here and we've got tension here. Let's get a bit messy in the diagram, but a lot going on. Now, because of the mass in the middle, the tensions are not gonna be the same. So the tension here, we'll call this tension P for that spring and for the bottom spring we'll call this tension R. Right now since we need to find uh, that, that length, the one with the uh, question mark, that means we need to find X and to find X if we're going to be using Hooke's law uh, we need to start to write some equations down. So the first thing we can write down is that uh, this length here of 4L is going to equal this length here. It's the same distance, isn't it? So the first equation I can write down 
is that 4L equals um, L plus L 2L plus X plus Y. Okay, so taking away 2L from both sides, I end up with X plus Y equals 2L. And I'm going to rearrange that to write um, Y equals 2L minus X because in the next part, I'll probably have uh, something with Y which I want to change for X. So we now need to resolve vertically because we're going to have to work out the tension. Now, what have we got going up? The tension of the top spring, and that's going to equal the tension of the bottom spring plus mg because this is all in equilibrium. Now we can apply Hooke's law with each of those um, tensions. So TP, the top spring, if we replace that with lambda x over L, so lambda is going to be 2mg, uh, x is going to be its extension, and we've called that x, haven't we? Yeah. Over its natural length, which is L, equals, well, the bottom spring, it also has a modulus of elasticity of 2mg, its extension is y, but look what we've done. Yeah, that y, we'll be able to change to 2l minus x in a moment, over l plus uh, mg. So let's make that substitution first. So 2mgx over l uh, equals 2mg 2l minus x. Um, over L plus mg. Now every term has got mg in it, so that can be cancelled out. So they can go. So let's now write down what we've got. So we'll have 2x over L equals, uh, if we expand our brackets, then 4L minus 2x over L. And then that's going to be plus one. So we're on the home straight now. Probably want to multiply everything by L to get rid of that nasty fraction. So you've got two X uh, equals four L uh, minus two X. And then the one will become L. So if we add two X to both sides, we'll end up with four X equals 4L plus L, which is 5L. Final answer, X is going to be um, 5L over four. Well, that's not the final answer because that's X, that's just the extension. What we need to do is to add the original length to that, which is L. So the distance of the particle below at P, so in other words, the length from P to Q is equal to, um, what's that going to be, like one plus five over four, nine over four, or two and a quarter, yeah. So two and a quarter, or nine over four L. So don't forget to add that um, original length to the extension to find that distance. Okay, one end A of a light elastic string AB of natural length 0.6 meters and modulus of elasticity 10 newtons is fixed to a point on a rough plane at an incline uh, of angle theta to the horizontal where sine theta equals four fifths. So I would probably start from here and let's get my cos theta and tan theta. So four fifths, so that means that's three. So let's write down cos theta is three over five and tan theta, if we need it, is going to be four over five. No, not gonna be four over five, it'll be four over three. A ball of mass three kg is attached to the end B of the string. 
the coefficient of friction mu between the ball and the sphere and the ball and the plane sorry is one third the ball rests in limiting equilibrium on the point of sliding down now if it's on the point of sliding down friction is going to be acting up opposing the light potential movement um, with a b along the line of the greatest slope find the tension in the string the length of the string right so let's draw this out in a, in a diagram so we have a incline here this angle is uh, theta so we've got this ball like this and it's being held by this uh, string uh, like this right so we'll put on the mass of or the weight of the ball so that's going to be uh, 3g now where's friction friction is going to be that way so limiting equilibrium so we've got mu r and um, because this uh, string is in stretch we've got tension also going up that way uh, we'll need to put on the normal reaction because since we've got mu r we're going to need to find r which means then finding these components here so we'll put those in so um, the one that's perpendicular to the slope that will be 3g cos theta and the one running parallel to the slope will be 3g sine theta now we worked out cos theta was 3 fifths so that means that this is 3g times by 3 fifths which is basically going to be 9 let's do it down here uh, 9g over 5 and the one for sine theta well we worked out sine theta was well we're told it's four fifths so then we get uh, 12g over 5 for sine theta or for that component of the force so if we start by resolving parallel to the slope like this we will have t plus mu r now mu is um, third equals 12g over 5 and if we resolve perpendicular to the slope we will have r equals uh, 9g over 5 so then we can put r into the first equation so we'll have t equals uh, if we move the one third r across we'll have 12g over 5 minus one third times r and r is 9g over 5 so I'll work that out and see what we get and that gives us 9 over 5 g okay I could change it to a decimal but I'm going to leave it exact for the moment and obviously that's the Newtons so that's the first part of part A there so the second part of part A is the length of the string so anytime you're working out the length the extension we're going to have to use Hooke's law so we've got the tension so that's 9 over 5g we'll keep it like that equals the modulus of elasticity is 10 let's keep the extension as x which will add to 0 0.6 to find the length of the string divided by the natural length uh, in this case which is 0 0.6 so we can rearrange that x will equal um, 9 over 5 g times by 0 0.6 
and then all of that is going to get divided by 10. Let's see what that gives us for x. Now we do get an exact answer here, 1.0584. So that means that the length of the string of string is going to be its natural length, which is the 0 0.6 plus its extension, this 1.0584, which is interesting. The extension is actually longer than the uh, length of the string, which is possible. I suppose if it's really elastic, like a rubber band or something. So if we add 0 0.6 to that, uh, we get 1.6584. So 1.6584. Now suppose we could leave it like that, but we, we like answers to three significant figures. So we'll call that um, 1.66 meters to our three significant figures. Okay. Now, part B asks us, well, uh, if mu is greater than a third without doing any further calculations, so we're not going to calculate anything, we're going to reason through this, state how your answer to A part two would change. Right, so let's look at our working and uh, let's see what, what's going to happen. So if um, this one third was to go down, Okay, so if this was to get smaller, then what would happen? You'd be taking away a, oh sorry, if uh, a third was to get bigger, yeah, so my arrow should be going the other way. So if one third was to increase there, increase there, that means that actually this bit here, all of this would increase. You'd be taking something more away from the 12g over 5 so t would get smaller if t were to get smaller because lambda and l are fixed that also means that x would get smaller okay so we can say um, i suppose you could write something if uh, mu is a greater than third, then what does that mean? That means that um, T would decrease. And if T decreases, that means that X decreases. Okay, and then if X decreases, it basically means that the length of the string would be shorter okay so the length of the string will be shorter that's the important word there that will be shorter so you don't have to do like any extra calculation you just need to reason it for and think okay if one changes what happens to the next one what happens to the one after that that's fine, yeah. Now it doesn't even say um, give a reason, it just says state. So if you even said that, like, you know, it gets shorter, that's fine. It's not asking you to give a reason, it just says state, which means just give an answer. So you should now be able to do exercise 3a on pages 44 to 45. So here's Hooke's law, which we're going to be. Uh, using to answer the questions. So don't forget your in these questions we want to be resolving horizontally, vertically. If you've got things on slopes, we want to be uh, resolving parallel to the slope. We want to be resolving perpendicular to the slope. These are all going to be in balance, yeah, because these are all equilibrium questions. So all the forces are balanced. And take care that if you want to find the final length of something, don't forget it's the um, natural length 
plus the extension. It can be easy just to work out the extension and forget you need it on, like add it to the um, uh, initial or the natural length. Now, we also remember that springs, strings, tings, kings and things. So there's nothing called tings, don't worry about it. So at springs, they can um, be compressed, in which case you will have thrust as a force pushing out. Um, they may be in extension, in which case you'll get tension. So that changes the di direction in which the um, arrow is pointing. Um, with strings, they can only be in extension. And if they're only in extension, then you're just going to get tension. Okay, that's it.